Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. If you watched my announcement video the other day, or have been keeping up with current events in general, you will know that Games Workshop have temporarily shut down. And that means that the new Blackstone Fortress expansion, Deadly Alliance, the one with the Zoat, has been delayed somewhat. It was supposed to go up for pre-order this weekend, um, but now it will not be. However, I'm not going to let a little thing like that stop me from talking about it. Games Workshop have still been teasing contents from the release, so I thought I would share my thoughts on them briefly. So the expansion is called Deadly Alliance, and if you watched my video talking about White Dwarf 452, you will already know a little bit about what the expansion entails. Basically, there is a Zote that wants to explore a part of the Blackstone Fortress called the Seethe, and he's going to work with the explorers because he believes there is some Zote technology that he wants to get his hands on. The problem is, the Seethe is constantly in flux, more so than other areas of the Blackstone Fortress. It's a very dangerous area. So the explorers are going to go in there, they're going to look for the particular archaeotech that the Zoat is interested in, and the Zoat will be accompanying them as a retinue character, an incredibly powerful retinue character. We will talk about that in a moment. In the update from Games Workshop, it mentions that to quell the sieve, you have to overcome the dark vortices. Now, when I first read that, my initial thought was, uh, we're going to go back to expansions like the Dreaded Amble and Traitor Command, where you're looking for a specific MacGuffin. Once you've got a certain number of them, you can unlock the Stronghold, which is the final conclusion of the campaign. However, looking in more detail, I think that we're actually going to get something which is more along the lines of No Respite. No Respite had a set of predefined missions, individual missions that could have more character and more narrative. And I think that's what we're going to be getting here because of a particular rule that they have showcased in the spoiler. Because to reflect how unsettled the Seethe is and how it's constantly in flux and things are always shifting around, they're introducing shard quake cards. These are a new type of discovery card. And when you flip them over, you have to roll on a chart. And one of the results on the chart is that the map reconfigures. This lends me to believe that we're going to be fighting over a small set of predefined maps rather than using maps from the discovery cards because otherwise they have to have alternative layouts for every single map card. And that feels like that's gonna be a lot so my thinking is that we're going to have a book with a small amount of predefined narrative missions as with no respite. The idea of reconfiguring the board during play based on discovery cards that get revealed, that's a really good one. It's really interesting. I think that can potentially have some serious ramifications. Suddenly you know, enemies are in different places. Suddenly your route has been blocked off. Uh, you have to rethink your strategy where you were moving towards may suddenly not be available anymore. You have to backtrack. So there's a lot of potential for tension and, and situations that you weren't expecting. The downside is, uh, as far as Blackstone Fortress is concerned, one of the biggest time sinks is setting up the maps and finding all the tiles and arranging them and getting it all set up for a combat. If in the middle of a combat you have to keep reconfiguring the map, um, that can that could potentially cause a little bit of a, a drag on the game and, and cause things to slow down. The example that they've shown isn't too bad. It's a case of removing one tile and moving one other tile. Uh, but um, I think adding a single tile as well, maybe. But if there's more complicated reconfigurations than that, and you have to do it multiple times in a combat, I can see that potentially being a little bit irksome. So that's something that does concern me slightly, but it's a good idea, it's a good concept. And there's actually uh, one of the missions in No Respite that does something a little bit similar, but this is a good idea that hopefully won't get bogged down with cumbersome mechanisms that involve sifting through your box of tiles to find the right new bits you need to reconfigure the board. One of the other Shard Quake 
results that they have shown in the article is the sudden relocation where the hostile player or the leader if there is no hostile player picks one explorer and that explorer is teleported across the battlefield and placed on the furthest empty hex from their current position and that's something that can really throw a spanner in the works as well because your heroes are suddenly out of position you may get blasted out of cover you may get put into position that's really far away from the exit when you're just about to escape you may get put in a position where you can't get to a discovery tile that you wanted to get to you may get dropped into the middle of a whole bunch of bad guys so there's some some real potential there for for again more tension and more exciting situations where suddenly something gets thrown at you that you weren't planning for. So from what I'm seeing here, it does look like the mission is going to be a series of predefined combat events. However, we definitely are getting some exploration cards as well. There's definitely going to be challenges as well as combats because the Zote, which uh, we're going to look at in more detail now, does have a special ability whereby he doesn't get involved in the challenges and furthermore the leader can choose to actually use the zoat to circumvent a challenge however if you do the zoat will lose trust in you and trust is going to be a big thing in this expansion because the zoat is incredibly powerful but he does have this trust mechanism and when i say incredibly powerful i really do mean he's pretty pretty strong he has a move of two he has a d8 defense a d6 agility and a d8 vitality he gets six wounds and because he's a retinue character he doesn't have to use action dice so regardless of how many wounds he's taken he will always get the same number of actions each round and the number of actions is three he also has two attacks he has the atomic disassembler and the eradicator glove the gun doesn't have uh, a close combat value, but at range 2 to 3, you're rolling 2d12 and a d8, and at range 4 plus, you're rolling 2d8 and a d6. His eradicator glove is only for close combat, and again, you're rolling 2d12 and a d8. The disassembler also has the advantage of ignoring cover. And the Eradicator Glove has the advantage of Mighty Strength, where when you roll the attack, you pick two results and apply them both. Which means he can really put out some serious damage. If you think about it, under normal circumstances, a critical hit is three wounds on an enemy. And he could potentially roll three critical hits when he attacks with the Eradicator Glove, and you get to pick two. So he can do six wounds per attack. And he has three actions per turn. So he could really put out 18 points of damage. Now, I nerf critical hits. I, I nerf them down to two from three. So that's not quite so bad. But that's still a huge amount of damage output. If you can get him into base contact with something like a dreaded amble, um, he's really going to go to town on it. And even at range with the atomic disassembler, you're ignoring cover. And at range two to three, you're very good chance of getting a critical hit again there's a lot of damage output they've offset this with the trust mechanism uh, and i'm not a hundred percent sold on the trust mechanism but it may well be just because of the way that they have teased it because under normal circumstances you get to control the zote the leader will control the zote he will apply those three actions per turn if you lose trust and you can lose trust by circumventing challenges or moving too far away from the zote during a combat and i'm sure there's other events and other situations that will also cause trust to go down and i believe you can make trust go up by giving him some archaeotech and uh completing expeditions but if he gets to a situation where he doesn't trust you anymore then he becomes random rather than you picking his actions you will roll on a behavior table and at the moment, we don't know what that behavior table looks like, but they have teased one of the actions from that table. And it's the action that they've teased that makes me a little bit concerned that the trust thing isn't quite going to work the way I, I would like it to work. Because the action in question is Reeve, which says, make one move action towards the closest hostile, then make two weapon actions against the closest visible hostile. So even when he's lost faith in you, even when he's lost that trust he's still going to go on a killing rampage and he's still going to take down enemies and 
That reeve of one move followed by two attack actions sounds like something that you would probably want him to do on his turn anyway. and might actually be the combination of actions you would pick. He's still going to be killing a load of stuff. He's still going to be taking a load of stuff down. What I was hoping for was that if he lost trust in you, then he would do things like um, stop fighting, wander off towards the closest discovery token and steal whatever Archaeotech is there and keep it for himself and remove the discovery token from the board so you lose access to it or maybe just leave the battlefield altogether just go or maybe yeah wander off and make you add some exploration cards back into your exploration deck as you have to go and find him things that would actually cause a setback things that would cause a problem I'm not sure if it's going to be a case that even when he's lost faith in you he's still just going to rage around the board killing stuff um like i say i have to see the whole the whole behavior table to really make a judgment and there may be things like he wanders off and takes the discovery tokens um but yeah i really would like to see things like he just wanders off and enemies stop targeting him because he just slinks into the shadows or goes off on a little jolly somewhere and won't help you for the rest of the fight but also won't be the target of enemy attacks or he might go over to a portal and summon a, a, a an exit point and get in it and go uh, that sort of thing i'm hoping that's going to be there because i feel like if he loses his trust in you it should be something that's going to cause you more problems than oh now he's just going a bit mad and rampaging of course also just going on a mad rampage makes it sound like he's just got in a bit of a sulk he's just got a rage on it doesn't sound like the results of someone losing trust in you it sounds like someone who's just got into a bad mood but overall it's looking like an interesting expansion i think what we're going to see is an expedition has um a series of exploration cards and then one of these mini strongholds and the shard quakes will only take effect in those mini strongholds and then there'll be some kind of big final conflict um it would have been quite interesting that if uh, to have an opportunity to fight the Zot, if maybe you lose so much trust, or in the final stronghold he turns on you, or does something. Um, I don't think that's going to be an option with this expansion. I also would have liked them to have included the character card, so maybe you could actually control the Zot. They might have had to have nerf him as a, as a character, like weaken his weapon slightly. But I don't think that's going to be there as an option either. Uh, so it's interesting it's looking okay I have reservations uh, but as always I'm excited to see new stuff and the miniature itself for the Zoat is absolutely brilliant so uh so yeah I guess that's my thoughts for now I have I have some concerns but overall I'm looking forward to seeing more and I will obviously be ordering it as soon as we have an opportunity to do so but that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really liked it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.